get ready to close in a clinic so that you can convert consultations? Well, first off, I would suggest that you look at your close right now. So take a look and is it between 40 and 60%? If it is, then you have to ask yourself, are you okay with that? Or would you like to bump that number up to a more world-class level? So world-class clinic closes consultations between 60 to 80% plus. Generally, if you have a high value in the market and you can provide evidence for that, you tend to close higher. And, and there are a lot of ways that you can, you can, you can do that. We've had lots of doctors come to us and ask us how they can improve their in-office conversion rates, their, what, what we call the close rate. And it's a very, very important metric to be watching. However, um, not everybody who comes to us and says, can you help me do this, is quite ready to exercise any of our recommendations. And I'll, I'll give you some ideas as to why. One of the first things uh, that I always ask when talking to somebody about whether or not they're ready, is do they have the right people in the right seats? So number one is, do you have what we refer to as a patient liaison? And sometimes they're known as different titles like patient counselors or uh, laser coordinators or you know any other, uh, even um, you know patient education consultants. There has to be somebody in place whose role is to really concierge the patient through a journey and invest at least 10 to 15 minutes of time before and after they see a clinician to involve the patient emotionally, ask some series of questions in order to get them uh, on side. When we look at how do you get ready to close, we're gonna look at the, the people involved in your team. And I think when we, when we, when we look at those people, we, we tend to look at do they have a clear expectation of what's expected of them? And do they have the skills and the knowledge and the confidence to be able to pull off what you're asking them to do, which is essentially, it's a customer service slash sales position. And I think what you'll often find is if you kind of throw somebody into that without kind of, um, well, hiring them for them, for, to, be, to be very honest in the, in the first place, which sometimes can happen, um, you might get a little bit of resistance. And I think generally what you need to do is you need to take an assessment as to whether you've got the, the right people and whether they're, they're clear. Oftentimes having conversations around, here's what's expected of you, this is what we're gonna be doing in the role. And actually when you do this role in this way, where you provide customer service and sales in, in, in the right way, the patient often leaves feeling like they just had a, an exceptional four seasons level quality experience at the clinic where they're happy to recommend you whether or not they say yes to treatment. So I'd say first off, you wanna take a look at you know, who you have on your team and whether they have a clear understanding of what it is that they're expected to do. The second thing is the people need uh, to have the space to be able to do these things. If you have these kind of conversations in a busy reception room or in an, uh, uh, like a clinical lane, it's not always the best approach. Rather, I suggest a, a more comfortable environment, a closed office, typically we set up with like a couple of nice comfortable chairs or couches, something that puts the patient at ease and creates a nice and relaxing, comforting atmosphere. That's space. Number three, I would say people need to have the time in the diary. Time in the diary is precious, but if you invest 10 minutes before the patient has to see the clinician and maybe five to 10 minutes after the patient has to see the clinician and ensure that that investment of time is put into the diary in advance uh, and you are sure that that's going to happen, you give it priority, uh, without that investment of time, you can't expect the kind of results that we're looking for, which is elevations of close rates by multiple double-digit figures. I would say, lastly, is a willingness to learn something new. Um, without that ability to look at what you're doing and decide whether or not it's working and productive for you right now and deciding that you want to change and do something different, without that attitude, it's really, really hard to get ready to do anything new and ready to close. So I would advise you to consider those things. Uh, number one, the right person, the right place, the right amount of time, and lastly, the right attitude. And then you'll be ready to close. Back when you were in school, you had a relatively easy way to ascertain where you stacked up against your peers and colleagues. However, now that you're in a practice setting, it's a little bit tougher to know where you stack up, not only against your ideal, but also against your peers and your colleagues. And that's why we created the Premium Practice Score. And if you'd like to take that test, if you'd like to see where you stand up against the best in the world, or perhaps the best for yourself, 
you're able now to take that and then see where you stack up.